Tonight is August the 23rd, 2020. And as promised, I have built a uh, quite a impressive little stereo 300 BSET amplifier. It is called Parafeed or Parafed, however you want to look at it. Um, the plate of each one, of each 300B, uses a 15 Henry choke for uh, its load. And then it's separated, uh, the DC component is separated from the choke into the output transformer, which is a James 8K primary to 4816 ohm output. Very nice, nice transformers. A pair of those. And uh, that's what I use to connect to the, to the speaker. The driver is a 6SN7, two stages, driving, let's see, this one says right, this one drives this tube, this one left, this one drives this tube. And of course, over on the left here, we have our inputs, we have our left and right channel, with some gain controls. Um, let's see if I can spin it around here a little bit, without dumping it on the floor, it's actually quite heavy. The back, I put uh, the banana jack type uh, 8 ohms. I also put a switch in here. This one I can run with no feedback at all, no negative feedback. Or I have a power ratio of 5 to 1. It will reduce 5 watts to 1 watt. I'll show you all that if I want to run just a little bit of negative feedback. A fuse, a power out, AC, and, and the other channel, of channel, right channel. It actually performs quite well, and you know what? After as many years as I've been uh, listening and building amplifiers, mostly building, I uh, uh, many of my amplifiers never make it past the uh, the workbench, the test bench, because I got too many already. But this one is unique. I like it. It's pretty amazing. It does have a unique sound of its own. I'll have to admit that. Well, let's quit the jibber jabber and uh, I'll show you basically what it does to try to keep all this short. Uh, right now we're running uh, 1.75 watts, 0.4, oh darn, glare. Let me work on that glare just a bit. Let's turn this guy on and maybe we can turn that other one off. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, it does. See, it's a half percent distortion at uh, one and three quarter watts. Now, I don't remember, I'll have to look back here again. I have uh, the negative feedback. There is no negative feedback now. No negative feedback. Well, we'll run it up here to five watts. Let's see. Yeah, five watts. There we go. Trying to get a little bit over, five watts. Our THD is a uh, Point, 0.8 percent. This is at a kilohertz, of course. Uh, there's the sine wave. The sine wave always just looks so darn good. I know that's actually really bright. Let me see if I can turn the intensity down so it's not sort of overwhelming. There we go. So five watts a kilohertz at uh, 0.8 percent. The other channel does the same thing. Uh, it's harmonic profile. This is just some noise I have in the room. That's actually not coming out of the amplifier. So it's actually quite clean. Now, if I turn it up to where I get 1% here, right before clipping, right there, 1%, does about 5.4 watts. Actually looks pretty good. If I turn it up to actual clipping, where we can actually see some distortion, see the bottom of it, you can see the bottom of it bulging out. I think that's actually still gonna find sound quite well. We're really not going to notice that because there's no there are no sharp transitions in it. That's six and a half watts, and it's up to about five percent. Okay. Now, if I put negative feedback in, flip the switch. It's a power ratio of five to one. It dropped to one point five one. Now, if we run it back up to five watts. Our THD's down to uh, 0.36. Really good. Really quite good. And it starts clipping. 
at, uh, let's see, let's see where it starts bulging out. I think it starts bulging out right there. At about six and a half watts again, and distortion is still actually pretty low at 2%. The upper end is, is phenomenally good. It's just, it's just really quite amazing how well it performs at the upper end. And the low end is not bad at all. Okay, that's, uh, let's go to 100 hertz. Let's turn the feedback out and keep it at 5 watts. But I'm calling it a 5 watt amplifier, so I just turned the feedback out. So we got to turn it back down because we're overdriving it. We'll turn it back down to 5 watts. Uh, that's at 100 hertz. 100 hertz. THD 1%. Okay, let's go to um, 30 hertz. No, that's 300. Okay, yeah, 30 hertz. Okay, there's 30. Looks pretty good, huh? Still just a smidgen below 5 watts at uh, 3%, but it's just so it's just so smooth. There's no crossover distortion. Um, there, there really is something to these uh, these uh, low power SET amplifiers. Uh, they, they do have kind of a magical sound to them. I'll, I'll actually admit that now. That's at uh, 30 hertz. Pretty good, huh? At 20 hertz, we got to go there. There's 20 hertz. Doesn't look bad, does it? Power drops slightly. 20 hertz. Distortion is kind of floundering around at 6 or 7 percent, but there, I don't find there really anything in there offensive that I think would sound offensive. And it is not low frequency deficient. It is not. It sounds quite good. Let's put some THD in it. See, this is self scaling, or well, actually. This unit right here is self-scaling. That's why even when the power drops immensely by a factor of 5 to 1, which is the 7 dB, it still looks good. So we dropped to 1 watt at 20 hertz. And our THD is 0.7. If we run it back up to 5 watts, got a little wrinkle right there. THD actually is higher there now. Back up to 30. 30. 31. Looks pretty good, huh? Our power went up a little bit. Uh, a little over 1% at 30 hertz. Performs really quite well. I'm really impressed. Like I say, it does have a it, it does have a very appealing sound. It, it's kind of addictive. I've heard it. I've heard uh, SET Alpha described that way, especially these 300 Bs. Okay, uh, let's look under it and see what it looks like. Okay, turn all the lights back on. It's still on. Um, uh, red and red. That's a channel, and uh, the yellow, yellow is a channel. I had to label all of them that way to keep my head straight. Here's the blocking capacitor. Uh, that blocks the uh, here's the chokes the output transformer power supply one Henry 300 milliamp you have to have balance uh, controlled on the filament uh, left channel right channel and then I have a balance control on the uh, on the AC portion for the uh, 6s n7s I run AC on the filaments I know some people seem to have a problem with hum I don't have a problem with hum I've never had a problem with home with directly heated filaments, and I will always run them on AC. Got to be careful here. Okay, uh, power supply. I've got capacitors in series to make sure I have uh, plenty of uh, voltage rating. I'm, it's, there's actually 400 volts on the plate. Uh, this is the filament transformer, 6.3 volt dual winding. I've got a 100 ohm resistor in the primary that drops it to five and a quarter volts. Uh, AC. Here's here's one uh, filament winding. There's the other one. This is the primary, and it's got 240 volt. Uh, it's got 220 volt primary, so I put them in series for 240 
to drop. It was originally a 12 volt, drop it down to six, and then like I say, and then I dropped the six down to a little bit over five with a 100 ohm resistor in the in the prime, which probably gives it a little bit of a, a shock absorber too. Here's my negative feedback resistor right here. I don't have a trimmer capacitor across it, and I'm not going to put one on it. This is the switch that turns the negative feedback on and off. Here's the output, you know, fuse, power, etc. The uh, here's my um, cathode resistors up here, cathode and uh, bypass capacitor, and it's cathode biased, which comes off the center of these resistors. These are 100 ohm, no, excuse me, they're 50 ohm um, hum balance pots for, uh, I believe, old Fender amplifiers. They work great. It's just, I think I've had, uh, I think I've bought like 16 of them, and, I've, and I still have six or eight, but I've, I've used a lot of them, so I just used, I used to use three in this amplifier. Seemed like there was something else I wanted to show you in here. Oh yeah, there is something I want to show you in here that you will find. Okay, yeah. See, it's very simple. Uh, eight, uh, signal comes in right here. There's a grid. There's the plate feeds the other grid. Output here. Feeds the grid. Oh yeah, right here. Let me show you in the schematic. The schematic is probably the best thing to talk about now. I found that I've done a lot of uh, LT Spice modeling and I found that this resistor right here needed to be very very high. It has to be there or you'll end up uh, charging the grid up and, and it'll block the tube. You'll end up with grid blocking here from charge so you have to have some sort of a resistor to drain it off. Oh my goodness I even drew the 1000 Henry choke in here. I did even that's actually a 47k. It didn't make any difference whether I put, I actually put in a 2500 Henry choke here. It didn't make any difference at all. I found a schematic to this, something very, very similar to this on the internet. But I found out that by modeling and by reality, uh, instead of a 470 ohm resistor here, I used a 220. And I used a 75k here, 22, and a 47 here and uh, 820 here and I personally made every one of these variable and adjusted for best performance that's why I put 240 there that's why I put 75 here I, I found 77 to be about optimal but 75 was as close as I could get 22 and 47 K here 100 microfarad 68 uh, the schematic that I found on the internet that I don't seem to be able to find again uh, had this bypassed. Well, if you're going to do some negative feedback, you can't bypass this because it'll just take the AC signal right back to ground. Here's the 200, 100, peak, uh, 100 microfarad capacitors in series. Yeah, I'll show you something interesting about them here in just a minute. I put plus to plus, so I have minus on this side and minus on that side. That's the way I've always uh, built uh, non-polarized capacitors. This is that 15 Henry choke, these little guys right here. The uh, inductance of the primary on this is 20 Henry's. So I'll show that right here. I used the 16 Henry, excuse me, the 16 ohm tap for the 8 ohm. I found that was the best performance. And there's really nothing much else to it. And this is just all of my uh, data for analyzing. I guess I should, I don't know if I want to show you and bore you with my LT Spice modeling or not, but I've done a lot of that. Um, I can't remember uh, the one that I found on the internet. I'd like to find that and show it to you again. But anyway, that is its performance in a nutshell. Yeah, what my goal was here was to use the choke loading so that I could use a high end, a very nice high end non-gapped push-pull transformer as the impedance matching section which is these guys right here because if you use a push-pull transformer it does not have a gap in the in the cores we all know and it saturates instantly <laughs> it just it won't work I tried that a long time ago and it, it, I just thought it, it would work for me but it, it doesn't work 
So you can't run, there is no DC flowing through this, the, these uh, output transformers. Let me turn this thing back over and, and get back to the top. Yeah, there is no DC running through, through here. All the DC is through here. These are uh, military, these are triad. They're 15 Henry, 120 ohm, no, 120 milliamp, and about 120 ohms. I actually made a, it had a, uh, all the ratings right here on the top, but they were, they were really ugly uh, military colors, so that's why I painted them gray. But I did, I did photograph it, so I have the exact uh, measurements, and I also wrote it on the bottom uh, of these uh, for in case somebody years from now finds this and says, oh, I'm going to take this apart and make me another amplifier. You never know. I like to uh, make the parts available to other people too. This is out of some Hewlett Packard stuff. These all all these power transformers I have are military surplus, and they're just they're fabulous. Same here. But anyway, all the DC runs through here, and then in, as you see, it, it, D, the DC is blocked for the output transfer. This is just a matching device. Very nice little output transformer. You could use Acrosound, you could use Triad, or whatever you happen to have. You could probably even use, possibly. Now, some of you are going to ask, well, why didn't you use them? Why didn't you use some of those uh, line transformers? Well, I'll tell you why. After doing a lot of analysis, that's why we got to go back to the schematic. For the AC component, the signal component, this uh, inductor and this inductor are completely parallel for AC. These these capacitors here are transparent for for the uh, for the AC component for the signal component. So if you put 20 parallel with 15, I think you get like eight eight uh, Henrys or so. Well, if this was if, see this is actually a center tap transformer. It actually has screen taps on it too. I even moved the plate lead over here to one of the screen taps, tr trying to lessen it to see what would happen. It got worse. It needed all you can get. You, you want this inductance these two parallel inductors, it would be ideal if they were up at uh, 20 Henry's. You get a little bit better low frequency response, but then they couldn't be, this one would have to be 40 and this one would be 40. And um, I do have a transformer that's 40, but it's in an operating amplifier and I don't really want to disassemble it. But then I'd need a 40 Henry over here. So we'll see in a future reference. Um, I'll just show you some scans. I won't scan it again so, so that you won't have to uh, watch all this stuff run. Let me bring some of these down. I want to show you what its frequency response is. Because uh, somebody said that uh, these things don't perform very well uh, at high frequency sometimes. Well, here I scanned it. As you can see over here from 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz over here. And here's 10, 20, here's 30 kilohertz, and it's down about uh, less than 2 dB. The 3 dB point, which would be one, two, which would be here, which is the half power point, is right there at uh, 20, 30, at 50 kilohertz. It has phenomenally wonderful highs. I think that's what makes them so charming. Okay. Uh, here's some scans. I won't scan it all again. This right here is uh, is the starting uh, uh, output level voltage across eight ohms, but I've oftentimes had to adjust it. But anyway, here's the 20 kilohertz. This is probably all at five watts, probably with and without the NFB. But you can see the distortion. Well, here, no, I'll, I'll show you static. Let's do static adjustments, static measurements here. Um, darn connectors, cheap connectors. Okay, see this is at 30 hertz. Let's go to 30 kilohertz. 30,000. Looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Still at five watts, so our, our, power, our power response didn't drop. And there it is at one and a half percent. I think that's what makes them sound so sweet up there. See, there's just 30 kilohertz right there. You know, this is this is the real deal here. God, that that glare. Let me let me turn off the lighting. Sorry. 
but I want you to see this. This is important. It's 30 kilohertz. Uh, the scope only goes to uh, 50. So we got. Let's back this thing back down to uh, 20. And you'll see a second harmonic out there. There's 20 kilohertz. Let's get that one out of the way. There's 20 kilohertz. There's 40 kilohertz. That's his second harmonic. It's not down a lot. It's only down 10, 20, about 25 dB. And it is a little distorted there. Oh, well, we're running. Look at the power we're running it as. I must say, yeah, I'm moving it around. I guess I bumped it. Okay, back down to 5 watts. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're at 20 kilohertz. Okay, now our second harmonic is down 10, 20, 30, 40, about 55 dB. Actually, not that bad. Yeah, it's got a magical sound to it, I'll admit. And I did order myself some new speakers. The old speakers I use in there are uh, 88 dB. I ordered some uh, that are 98, 98 point something, like 99 dB. So I get 10 dB gain right there, and that's twice the uh, volume level. And by the way, I have a special guest in, the, in, in here today. Look at this old, look at this beauty. Still works great. Let me see if I can, uh, if I know what I'm doing here. Isn't that amazing? This is a, a 535A. See, there's the scale illumination. Just, uh, just a real, real beauty here. Intensity. Turn that down so it's not glaring at you. Five thirty-five A. Yeah, we had these at NASA when I started there in January nineteen seventy. We were still using some of these. We also had four fifty-threes. Had a lot of four fifty-threes. But this one's got a um, doesn't have a fancy. Uh, it's got a Type B plug-in. You know, it's a single channel. It's either you can switch, but it's not a dual channel. I'm gonna have to get me another one. You got the get the C the Type C A is what it's called. But uh, isn't, isn't that a special old device right there? Still working. When I bought it, it did not work. It did have a power supply problem. It had a bad uh, electrolytic capacitor that I replaced a few years ago. And uh, I was over uh, at the storage shed where I had it just a little while ago. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to drag this beast home and uh, show, show it to you guys tonight. Yeah, it's just about washed out with that, that big old glaring light on it, isn't it? Okay, well. I don't know what else to show you. Here it is. Uh, my camera tends to make the uh, orange a little pink, but uh, it's uh, quite a charming little uh, stereo 300B amplifier. I've actually been uh, also playing with my uh, my Williamson designs and disabling and listening to them with and without NFB. The thing about it is, I gotta say all this. Uh, th there, there are some mindsets out there that negative feedback is a bad thing. That is certainly not true. This amplifier with no negative feedback, every component in it, every tube in it. I've got like 40 of these guys right here, and I hand selected these two. But everything is so sensitive. And so particular and so critical that without some, at least an oscilloscope and a sine wave generator and one, some way to measure the output, you might not have to measure the actual harmonic distortion, but you, you need something to look at the sine wave. You plug tubes in and you don't know what they're going to do. You just plug them in and listen to them and be happy. Because uh, everything everything's almost out of control. I mean, it, Every, any any weak link takes the whole uh, takes, takes the whole amplifier down with that some negative feedback, but with but with a little bit of negative feedback, a lot of things get fixed. For example, not this amplifier, not this particular one, but I'll just use that as an example. I've seen plenty of amplifiers, push pull amplifiers, where the input signal is perfect. Right out of the first stage, it looks bad. Out of the second stage, it looks even worse. All the way up to driving the grids of the output tube just looks horrible. 
but then the output looks good again because it's going all the way back to the cathode. That global feedback fixes so many things in the middle, you just wouldn't believe it. But without any negative feedback, I mean, we've got a little bit right here. We, and we got a little bit right here. We do have some negative feedback, but it's pretty minimal. We don't have any global feedback. We have a little bit of local feedback in each stage. But without some global feedback, uh, just a few nasties really get magnified. But with about 15 or 16 dB of global feedback, it just straightens out a horrible mess in here and makes it turn out pretty darn good. It does give it kind of a compressed sound. I haven't listened to it on this one and, and experimented with it yet, but years ago I built one with a variable feedback resistor right here. And uh, as you crank in more and more uh, feedback, the sound gets more and more compressed sounding. Also, the gain of these things is just outrageous. So I think that's one of the things that makes them sound so alive and so dynamic is that the, the, the gain is so high without that feedback. But anyway, I, uh, I don't know if the gentleman that I took the advice from or the thoughts from about putting in uh, just a little bit of about 7 or so, 7 or 8 dB of feedback is uh, would ever watch my videos. But if you did, thank you. I thought that was a good idea. And there it is. There's the uh, my my version of the of a stereo 300B 5 watt per channel amplifier. <laughs> I don't know what it weighs, but it it must weigh a good uh, 60 pounds or so. Well, thanks for watching and stay safe.